So you start, I'm an amateur, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm a completely normal guy. And, and, and my video should really be for people who are moving towards problematic area, but rest assured you can move it back. You, you can pull it back quite quickly. And, and, and personally, I would advocate. Gary, how did you find carnivore? Uh, hi, Dave. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, before I answer that, can I just say that uh, I've really enjoyed a lot of your videos. And I'd also like to applaud all of the people that you've uh, done videos with, because some of the stories recently I've watched, uh, to be honest, are quite tearful, um, especially when you see, you know, fully grown men make such massive changes in their lives. And you can see people on some of these interviews get quite emotional. And I think that's the story of your channel. Um, some of the emotions of some of the people that are in far, far worse condition than me come out. And, and it's the authenticity of those stories that are going to save many more people. Um, and obviously attracted me uh, to watch more videos as well. Um, for me, uh, Carnivore really came about through fasting. Um, I've been interested in fasting for about three years, and I was interested in it through a guy I've seen online called Dr. Sten Ekberg, I think his name is. Um, I like his channel. He sort of does it in a very... Uh, it has quite a nice process, basically, and explains it. It makes you feel that it's safe to try it. Um, so I experimented um, 24 hours, 48 hours, three days. And the longest I ever went a few years ago was five days. Um, and obviously, I am a sugar and carb addict. And I found this really difficult because basically, I just wanted to have a mince pie or a cherry bakewell in England. I, I just couldn't hold off for that long. Um, but that was a few years ago. Um, But this uh, October of last year, I'd come back from Bulgaria where I have an old property that I work on. And um, I put on, a, as I, I mentioned, I've, I've put on about 14K in two months. And it was pure gluttony. It was approaching the English Christmas. Uh, the nights get dark. Um, and... I, I was just eating. I don't eat one of anything. Uh, I could out hobnob somebody easily. I could probably out drink most people. Uh, and it's a disgusting, uh, disgraceful way to sort of be. Uh, but the, the way I put on, I started to struggle to breathe. Um, I was getting out of breath just um, standing up or going for a walk. And I've normally been very fit for most of my life. And, uh, and I could feel the pressure of the food sort of on me. And, and I, I was entering a phase where I was going to not be able to save what I was doing. I was not going to be able to save myself from myself. I was going to go down a much worse road and end up a lot larger and a lot iller, where it was going to be a lot more difficult to come out of it. Um, and my wife was worried too. Um, a lot of the conditions I would get in was the same as many people have mentioned. Um, I was suddenly waking up in the middle of the night with incredibly fast heart rate uh, and having no reason why. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I think it's like sleep apnea or forms of sleep apnea. There were many nights when I would just uh, stare at the roof. I, I just couldn't sleep. My wife is snoring next to me, and I couldn't fall asleep. Uh, very uh, heart rate, again, very rapid. And I would also fall asleep in uh, for short periods and, and suddenly be shocked awake. Um, and this is quite scary. Uh, it's not something I've ever had before. Um, I also started to get a lot of pain around the lower half right side of my body. And I had to look up what organs were there, and obviously gallbladder, liver, and kidneys. Uh, it could have been my appendix as well, which is not a good thing. Um, 
and I, I, I just, I, I felt really large around my waist. And, and um, I used to be a runner. So I'm 55 now and I ran marathons when I was 40. Uh, so I know what it feels like to feel athletic and fit. And this was all very uncomfortable for me, but it was just edging into the sort of dangerous medical side of it. So the only thing I knew at the time was maybe I should fast because there are a lot of advantages to fasting. Uh, and essentially, keeping it simple, it just basically empties your system out and allows your body to regroup and, uh, and, and reset itself, in the very least, apart from all the medical, technical stuff. So I asked my wife, and she said, yeah, okay, go for it. And I went for a 14-day fast. Uh, straight off the bat, a 14-day water fast. So between uh, October of last year and December, I put on 14 kilos. I went from uh, 90 kilos to 104, uh, very suddenly. And um, my fast didn't last 14 days. I only got it to 10. And the reason I only stopped at 10 was because my wife was concerned. Uh, there was no reason to be concerned, but she just didn't like the idea of eating alone. And we were moving into the kind of weird time periods. And I lost 11 kilos. So I lost 11 kilos in um, 10 days. And if you look at fasting, um, a lot of your sugar and stuff like that is connected to water. There's water retention. And water weighs a lot. So the water had left my system. Um, and, of course, I was on the toilet all the time. Um, but I was amazed uh, even I was shocked, and I have to say that when it comes to fasting, you can do the research. I can't tell you all the medical stuff, but you go online and you'll find information about fasting. But a lot of people do it between day one and five. But the magic happens after day five. Because you really, really need to clear out everything. Uh, and that happens in certain stages throughout those five days. But it's it's done then. And I bought uh, urine ketosis strips, and I bought other strips that you can sort of see if, you, if you're going to have any serious issues, especially if there's any blood in your urine. And they were all fine. But the ketosis ones went from white to black about day five. They just the color went dark that's the color you're waiting for because i didn't know about this i was kind of finding out as i went along i was doing my own human experiment on myself and um yeah so i was dark purple and i and, and about day five day six i felt absolutely euphoric uh, my, my body kind of tingled with a uh an adorable light emptiness I, it's as though my body was saying thanks thanks for unloading all of that shit now now i'm going to try and just sort this out and one of the benefits of fasting for someone like me is it can reduce your habits so it can take away your addictions it could stop you, you know, having too much sugar in your coffee, for example, or it could just, it, it stops your desires. So if you have an addiction or a bad habit, a, a long fast will remove it. Now, it, it, you can't fast forever. You have to stop at some point. Uh, but the carnivore diet came to me at that point. Uh, because when you come off the fast, it's very easy to just get it all wrong. So I decided to start the carnivore immediately after the fast. Um, and I kept it kind of strict. Uh, someone mentioned that avocados were all right. I regard avocados now as a pudding, to be honest. Uh, I'll have, uh, uh, you know, the bacon, the eggs, like everyone else does. Not, I, I put my butter in the in, in the scrambled eggs. I find it easier to consume that way. Um, and what 
what's happened since uh, is that the carnivore has kept me down. So it's it, after the fast, I lost the weight. Uh, and uh, my body was not in perfect shape. It, but the uh, what's happened since doing carnivore after the fast is that my body has remodeled itself. And some people say this. Uh, it reshapes itself. So it will remove maybe your love handles. And I, I, I'm one of those men that get fat lower back and on the side. And, and this started to sort of shrink down. But my weight didn't change. Uh, and I also, after about two weeks of carnivore, I started to do what I call the hundreds. Uh, I, I was enjoying this slightly thinner me, and I thought, well, maybe I can help myself a little bit more, because it was quite quick and dramatic. So I start, I do 100 press-ups, 100 squats, and 100 like leg lifts, uh, just three basic exercises. And I don't want to go down the gym and be all aggressive and everything, because I'm 55. And really all I want to do is sustain um, an average body and move into my old age in a, in a fair and reasonable state. Uh, I don't want to get sort of too excited with uh, having massive muscles. But what's happening with a carnivore diet is it's reshaping your body so you end up with them anyway. Uh, and... and um, and then I, I, I bought a book in an old bookshop. I love, I love all these old bookshops and things and old buildings. And I, and I live in a, an area in England where they have lots of market towns. And, and they're so lovely to walk around. And I found a book called, um, I need my notes now. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, it, a book, Eat Like the Animals uh, by David Robenheimer. Now, a lot of strict carnivores might not like these books because they, they basically, these scientists over about 40 years from Oxford and Cambridge, they went out into the wild and obviously in the labs as well, and they studied all kinds of animals, including mammals. They even found a brand new species of monkey in the uh, Alawesi. Alawesi? It's in Indonesia somewhere. Uh, and they worked with loads of other people over years, and they analysed what animals do when given certain uh, resources of food. And... And essentially, I won't bore you with all the book, but you know the, the reason for doing the book was why, why are animals not fat? So why can they control their diets, whereas human mammals seem to have a problem with it? Uh, and, and obviously we know the answers. The answers are that there's processed foods and there are addictive chemicals within those foods, and you're addicted, and you want to keep going back and eating them more. But these guys were finding out what the animals desired. And what most creatures, including mammals, desire is a, a high percentage of protein. And, and, and what they're doing, if you look at what I'd started doing, I started looking at all the packets in my cupboards. I looked at the tins and I looked at the back of them. And you can see the carbs, the sugars. It's written on you, even if it's not always true. It's, it's generally there to give you a guide. And these guys would, would promote, I would say, uh, a sort of, 80 to 90 percent protein and then sugar and carbs for the other 20 30 percent but this is in the wild this is for wild animals and it, it, and they took it from uh you know from insects to flies to bugs right up to monkeys to elephants and things like that and it's 40 years worth of work so human beings are essentially the same we are protein seeking animals um but Obviously, the industries around us have shifted us away from that because profits can be garnered from producing a cheap product that you know gives them more profit. But so you start. Like, yeah, I'm an amateur. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm a completely normal guy. And 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 my video should really be for people who are moving towards problematic area. But rest assured, you can move it back. You, you can pull it back quite quickly. And, and, and personally, I would advocate fasting and carnivore. Uh, and your initial fast should be 10 days, I'd say, uh, because this resets your system and it flatlines all of your addictions. Um, now, since fasting, uh, since the carnivore, uh, I read and heard all about the changes that can happen with your body. 
And this is quite interesting because it doesn't matter what you read, what you hear, what the, what the sort of narrative is from people's opinions. What actually happens to your physical body is is, is incredible, and you can't question it. Um, so, for example, my waist was something like thirty. I've written this down, look, and I've forgotten it now. My waist was, I lost about uh, six inches off my waist. And I now, although I can, I do weigh myself every day, purely because the scales are near the shower, I get out. At the same time, every day, after the toilet, in the nude, I weigh myself. And, and I'm exactly 89 kilos all the time. But the best way to find out if you're in a healthy average state is to measure your belly button waist if you measure your belly button waist with a little tiny tape measure every day just go oh there it is and if that measurement is half or less than your height you, you, you don't have any issues you're not going to be at risk from any of the traditional diseases that being overweight can cause so i now use the tape measure so i've gone from 42 to 36 um, and, and all I have to do, if I have a, a cheat day, and rest assured, I'm a little bit of a dirty carnival. I don't keep it strict. I'd like to keep it strict, um, but there's, uh, there's comedy in that name, you know. Um, but some of the effects, so, so, so I've lost weight around my waist. I, I do this thing where I can put my hand around my body now, and I can put my two hands together, like a prayer, but on the side of my body, uh, and I can put my arms like down my back. And these, these are physical things that I was unable to do before I'd lost this mass of circular weight uh, that I was building up around my body. And uh, like in the shower, like you, you're washing yourself and, and you're kind of washing a skinny you. It, it, you're thin. And, and uh, if you haven't been for a while and you put yourself at risk, it's, it's a really enjoyable to feel yourself be normal, to, to feel your mouth, to see where your muscles are. Um, it, 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 it's simply delightful. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how much of a hard nut guy you are. It, it's so pleasurable to start to see your shape. And it sounds like, you know, oh, you're just looking at yourself all the time and you want, you want to look great. It's not about that post-50. No one, no one looks at me anymore. I'm, I'm, I've, I, don't, I look brown in the camera. I'm, I'm grey. I'm old. You know, it's, it, it's over. The game's over. The idea now is to move into old age uh, at a respectable weight, at a safe weight, uh, and to feel good about yourself, because I'm not going to get younger. I'm going to get older, and, and I don't want to be carrying this weight in. So it's real play. Oh, the toilet thing. Everyone talks about the toilet thing. I'm British, so British humour, toilet humour, all over the place, right? We love toilet humour. Now, whether or not vegetables and all this kind of stuff is bad for you, I don't really know. I'm just not. I, I've read that there's, there's issues with them and stuff, but I can assure you, regarding the toilet thing. I used to go daily, twice a day, sometimes once, and they were, I don't want to disgust anyone, but they were huge. They were huge. They were award-winning and, and kind of concerning. And, and there, was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of paper being used. There's a lot of shrapnel. And, you know, even, even I was like, well, my family must have one of the best gut systems going, right? I can deal with anything. Uh, so carnival, nothing, nothing. I mean, it's pebbles, occasional pebbles. And and, and I love the term that I heard from somebody, uh, the ghost wipe. Uh, uh, you, you go back there and you and you and you deal with it, and and there's nothing there. There's nothing there, and you're like, you know, that's a massive physical change that your body is demonstrating to you. This is a good thing. And then, of course, everyone talks about the bread. And I used to, poor oh, pastries in England, cakes. You know, you go to the church stall, the market stalls. Oh, it's, it's pa sausage rolls. Oh, adorable. All pastry. 
I could probably go through a loaf of bread a day. I'd have a, a whole tin of soup to myself. A tin of soup is supposed to be for two or three people. No, it's not. As far as I'm concerned, it's all mine. And I'd eat that tin of soup with six slices of bread with cheese on and a bit of butter, actually. You know, and then I, disgraceful, gluttony, gluttonous behavior is what I'm about. And um, so I cancelled bread because that's what the advice says, right? The grains are bad for you for numerous reasons. And no bloating. Um, so no bloating at all. And there's a lot of pleasure in that too. You, 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 you just feel good about yourself because you don't feel... I don't know, like you, like you, you, you've over encumbered yourself through gluttony. It's a weird feeling, right? Because it's like I feel full, but I don't feel uncomfortable. I agree. Yeah, totally. Uh, and then obviously, that keeps your stomach flat, which is something. It's something we all want. It it, it, it looks good, feels good. When you wear a fitted t-shirt, you. You, know, you feel a little bit sassy. You want to walk, you know, in the pub. You know, you feel good. You just feel good. And in England, uh, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of your guests are American. I mean, I'm sure in America, I'm well travelled. So. Um, you know, if I can just touch on that, when I was living in Asia, because we lived in Malaysia for six years, um, we used to see Westerners come on holiday to certain islands and places and stuff and i don't mean to be rude here but uh europeans and americans generally not the fit ones but the, the average right compared to asian people you look like you're walking death you turn up you're white you're pasty you've got your money you you look like shit even british people uh average average people not the people who look after themselves you go to asia to even japan possibly where there's generally a slim culture slimmer than yours and these people look way way healthier than you do and they have less than you do and they're generally happier than you are and, and this was a, that's a separate fascination that we came across um I'm not saying all the food is great in Malaysia. Some of it is now getting a little bit toxic. And there's three cultures in Malaysia, the Chinese, the Malay, Malay, and you get the Indian Malay. And they are getting slightly bigger uh, because they, some of them have wealth, but a lot of Western foods are finding their way over, American foods are finding their way over, uh, uh, which are cheaper. And not all of the country is, is wealthy. So the poorer people generally have to, by what they can afford, which is not very good. So, but, so when you feel slim as a Westerner, you, you are separating yourself from the majority. I can go down the pub in England and, and I, can, I, I can see the size of this, this, um, men that look like barrels. And it's scary. And that's what I was. Uh, I, I was a man that looked like a barrel and I thought I was... Uh, you know, and 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 it, it's photographs and videos. Like if you catch a, a photo of yourself on holiday, someone else has caught you when you weren't posing, uh, or they've got you walking along the beach or something, and, and they video your wife's videoed you or something. And, and I mean, I actually thought I might have had sort of body dysmorphia or something, because uh, I remember being in in Asia where, uh, and, and I thought. I, I, it's really weird. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what body dysmorphia is, but it's when you think you're really slim and then someone takes a picture of you and you look at it and go, holy shit. I look like the guy, I look like the guy that I was slagging off as a fat bastard in the bar earlier on. And and, and that's when it dawns on you. I, there are, I read once uh, somewhere that you know, if you want to learn how to do something really well, for example, like surfing. I used to surf when I was very young. You sh people should film you doing something. If you're dancing or you're doing anything physical, you'd be filmed because then you can see yourself in a way that you can't because you're doing it. 
I don't know if that makes any sense, right? So when you get photographed or someone takes a video of you and you look a lot bigger than you think you are, it's quite a shock. So uh, so I had some photos of me on a beach in, um, I, I, I thought I was cool like I was. Oh, I was slim when I was 30. And uh, no, no, I wasn't. And it was really humiliating. And I think the humiliation is, is, is a very valuable tool. Uh, and, and, you know, if you are overweight, uh, I mean, I'm not really ill. I don't have any, like, uh, diagnosed problems. I haven't been to the doctor for 30 years. I, I basically try to look after myself. Uh, and what's happened to me is that between 45 and 55, something happened. We'll, we'll call it metabolism. So I carried on stuff in my face. I stopped moving as much. And, and my, my metabolism just walked out of the room and left me to deal with what was coming. And what came was this massive barrel that uh, I didn't need. Uh, and so I fought back in the only way I knew how. <clears throat> now, a lot of your guests are quite funny because they, uh, I mean, I don't even have a doctor in England. Uh, I haven't got the need for one. Uh, now, so I think I'm very lucky. I think I have dodged a bullet by fasting and carnivore. And, and you know, I'm not going to go back. It, it's simply not worth it. But a lot of your people that you interview, they seem to be on a lot of medications. They seem to be uh, always visiting the doctor. They're always getting their blood tests and stuff. I've not had any blood tests. I did a urine test myself because you can buy them online. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of a, a, an, an example for people who are kind of just slipping. They're slipping. They're going into the danger zone. They're in their 50s. And rest assured, if you do this carnival, uh, you will pull it back. You will pull it back. And uh, and now I simply say uh, I'm not allowed to eat anything that uh, doesn't take preparation. And preparation is not open in a packet, by the way. Right. So if you uh, if you if you don't have to prepare your food, uh, you can't eat it. <laughs> so every single thing. And it's funny when you get. Sorry, I'm rambling. Aren't I know. I mean, it's, everyone rambles, so I'm rambling. But when you go to the supermarket, Tesco for me, right? So we go to Tesco, we've got Tesco club card and all that. And, you know, nine of the aisles in Tesco are shit. You know, going on carnivore, I've realised that nine of the aisles aren't for me. And I'm, and I'm allowing the vegetable aisles to be included at the moment because they're kind of whole foods, right? Uh, but most of those aisles are defunct. Um, what's annoying in England, though, is that uh, butchers are triple the price of Tesco. So private butchers do have all that quality stuff, absolutely. It, brilliant stuff. And I, I do know one farmer butcher down the road, which I do visit. And I normally go in and say, you know, have you got any deals? You know, what's going on? And I have a chat with him, and he, he, he likes me because he knows what I'm trying to do. And he's a, a big, big guy, right? Uh, and he wants to reduce himself and he's my age uh but he he can't because I don't know, his addictions or whatever and and but he's watching me go in like get smaller and smaller and smaller and he's just like you son of a bitch he, if you can do i'm the butcher i'm selling it to you and maybe i should just be eating my own stuff and, and not the other stuff but they're very expensive, so it's a treat. So I normally go in and get um, like uh, big top side beef uh, joints. Sorry, I'm not an expert on joints. I mean, and then I'll slice them into steaks uh, and then freeze them individually. Um, and I use I bought an air fryer, which is a little bit more convenient because it doesn't smoke your kitchen out. I'm not a very good cook, right? So. And used to air fry them. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, uh, um, so I've been on Carnival for about three months now. I'm at the three month line, and I have to say I've never lost weight, uh, but I've never gained weight. But luckily, I'm at the right weight, so I'm very close to my BMI weight, and my waist measurement against my height is very close. It's within one centimeter of being regarded as uh, completely optimal, not too skinny, not overweight. 
and uh, and I'm, I'm I'm medium muscle mass because I'm quite sporty and I wouldn't want to lose that muscle. Uh, I think if I try to force my body down from 14 stone thereabouts to 13 stone, I think I would risk uh, losing power and strength and sort of. Uh, I don't think I'd want to go there. So when I see people that are really skinny, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure that's a, a good move either. Uh, and considering I've got a construction project to do in the summer, I, I, I kind of need, I'm going to need to have power and stamina. Now, I'm a bit worried about going to Bulgaria. I'm going in uh, tomorrow. And uh, when I get there, I have half an acre that I walk around constantly. It's really sunny. And I, I have to try and do this renovation project. Uh, and I'm going to be burning a lot more calories. Uh, so I, I could take your advice here. And Bulgaria is a meat-eating nation. Uh, the culture is very meat-based. Um, but they, are, they don't have bacon like we do. Uh, and in the small village where I uh, sort of reside, they have a butcher, but you can't buy steaks. And the reason you don't buy steaks is because they're poor. You can buy um, uh, diced beef, for example, and chicken, lots of pork, loads of pork. But it's not a wealthy country. They're not a wealthy people. So they don't eat ribeyes and things like this uh, on a daily basis. So in Bulgaria, I'm going to have to play around with a few things. Um, you know, and I'm considering one of the safest options uh, is, is rice. Uh, and I know that people would disagree with that. But if I'm working hard and I'm going to be burning this stuff off, uh, there's going to be a, a, probably a majority of chicken, pork, uh, and, and, and some steak, but not big steaks. Uh, sausages, obviously, dried meats, cured meats, which you can get. Um, but I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna need some carbs. I mean, I was gonna ask you about this. You know, um, I, <clears throat> I seem to have an issue with uh, staying strong and powerful being on a carnivore diet. Uh, mm. If it's a big carnivore diet, is it actually possible? I don't want to lose power or stamina. Mm. I I feel like, I mean. I wouldn't class myself as someone who's ever had power, but <laughs> having said that, I feel like I've got more kind of endurance ability on carnivore than I had before. But I mean, I, I take your point though. I think because the work you're doing, we talked about this offline, you'll be doing a lot of renovation work and stuff like that. Right. And that's kind of heavy work, especially when you're doing it on your own. I would think it, whether it's rice or something else that you may have to introduce because of just where you're living, um, I, I, I think it's just something that you would have to test with, you know, and it's like, okay, well, if I have that much, I feel good and I can keep going. If I have less than that, then I'm struggling to keep going. If I have more than that, I start to feel bloated or whatever. I think it's probably... The first few days or first few weeks is kind of let's just test things out and see how I go. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's going to be interesting. And I will try and keep it carnival. Absolutely. And I agree with the stamina. I've, I've started running recently, uh, you know, old man running. Uh, I'd say I do about three and a half miles. Um, and I don't really push it like I used to because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be injured. And I, I don't need to prove. Uh, anything to anyone anymore I've already done uh, marathons when I was sort of 40 ish um don't recommend those by the way um but um but I, 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 and what I find is sometimes I go out the door like it's, it's always the devil at the door right that's why people don't keep fit it's the devil at the door uh, but when you get out there when I'm running at a slow pace uh which is, which is the right thing to do really uh, I can keep going for quite a while so the carnivore diet does give you this lovely, slow burn. Uh, it does give you that kind of, you know, longevity, that talky pull. But when it comes to that quick sprinter, twitch fiber, power, you don't get that from carnivore. Uh, carnivore is a, a very calming 
diet, your personality, your character, your temperament is all kind of flattened a little bit. There's not a, I don't, I don't get excited being a carnivore, but uh, give me a few cakes, yeah, I might just uh, light up the room. But um, it's it it's, sometimes the sugar does play a part. But what types of sugar and how much sugar, and how often? Sugar may be of use to people who um, yeah, who are going to burn it and have a demand for it. But I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. But I may need to tweak the diet when I'm in bed. I'm a little bit worried about it because. But again, I'm going to travel with my tape measure, and I, I and I've got scales in Bulgaria, and I know I'm just going to put the tape measure around my body in the morning and go right. You've put on an inch and a half. That means that what you've done is. Uh, it, it's not being utilized by your body, so you mm. can check it basically. Uh, and I think you know, the longer the longer I do carnivore, the more I feel in tune with my body. And I think you're going to find out pretty quickly if this is if it agrees with you or not. Like it's just going to be, oh yeah, I just don't feel the same anymore. I need to cut back, or I need to cut it out, or I need to try something else. And no, I, I, I mean, I, some of my addictions were bananas. So I, I used to think I was a monkey. So I love bananas. I could eat, I could eat six bananas a day, no problem at all, easy. Uh, and people, I heard this funny rumor that if you eat too many bananas, you die. Well, that's that's a load of rubbish. Um, I can eat bananas. Um, and so, I, I, like I say, I'm kind of a dirty carnivore because, uh, and the reason I can be a dirty carnivore is because I'm not dying and, and I'm not. Uh, I haven't got any diagnosed illness. I've not had any. Uh, I might have them. I might have autoimmune. Um, I might have problems. Uh, I believe I do have problems. They're just not diagnosed. And so I, I can't you know, verify any of it. But I have started introducing things to see if there's a problem. So I do introduce bananas. What immediately happens when, when, I, when I introduce a banana is that there's a movement, right? So, you know, the, the, uh, my movement, my toilet movements become regular. Uh, and for example, if I eat, uh, I've tried to experiment with some of the yogurts to add flavor to the meat dishes. So I've tried to use mascarpone, I've tried to use creme fraiche, I've tried to use, what have I got at the moment? I've got Greek yogurt. Because it, it's nice to have something just on the side with your meat. Uh, but as soon as I eat these things, uh, I will get uh, wind, uh, get wind of it. And it's uh, it, it's nearly comical because I've had five days of just meat. And then I'll add something and I go, right, let's see what happens. Uh, so as an eliminate di a, a, a elimination diet, it's absolutely hilarious. You, you can, you can just try stuff and go, let's see what happens. And your body goes, Meh. No, shouldn't have done and that. And it's just like flicking a switch. It's just <laughs> pull my finger kind of thing. And it's quite wow. entertaining. It's quite entertaining. It, it, it makes it fun just to sort of see what's happening. Um, uh, so, yeah, I can play with it. Uh, and, and, and the hundred a day, the press-ups and the running, I'm doing about four runs a week. Uh, the reason I do those exercises and those little old man runs is because I kind of knew I'd be a dirty carnivore. And the reason I knew I'd be a dirty carnivore is because of the monkey on the shoulder. Because the monkey on the shoulder has been with my friend for 50 years. And when people want to uh, remove themselves from sugars and carbs, they are taking on a formidable foe. They're taking on a formidable, a formidable version of themselves. And that monkey they've had on their shoulder that tells them to have one more beer, two more beers, uh, have another Snickers, have two more cakes, why not? Have three more cakes, it's fine. You'll work it off tomorrow. That monkey on the shoulder is, 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 is a, a person, a foe that you're competing to, to achieve your particular goals, if, whether it's weight loss or health or whatever. You know, it, it, it's, it's, you really do need to look in the mirror and give yourself a, a really good talking to. Because the person, you, the person you have to defeat is formidable. It's the, you, have to, uh, you have to compete with the addicted, gluttonous, greedy 
you. And most people can't. And then not only that, you have to compete with the culture you live in, a culture of uh, uh, enjoying food, uh, different foods, worldwide foods. I live in England, so I can I can get any food from anywhere in the world whenever whenever I like. And lucky for me, we, we have a little bit of savings. So even though the UK is horrendously expensive, uh, I am able to experience things if I want. But suddenly when you're on carnival, you remove yourself from your own culture, your own people. Plus you have the addictive personality of the old you to deal with. You're asking a lot of people. Uh, so, I mean, would carnival become a worldwide diet? No. No, because you're asking uh, billions of people to, to change uh, their, their, their sort of food culture of where they live uh, and, and, to, and to possibly risk relationships with people, uh, have issues within their families, uh, uh, remove themselves from cultural festival events and stuff because you're just, you're fringe, you're a bit weird. Um, you know, and, and, and then, of course, you're still taking your old, addicted personality on. And that monkey on your shoulder does not disappear. You just have to make a new arrangement with him. Because he's going to tempt you back to the biscuit jar. He's going to, he's going to take you back there. And he's going to take you back to the pub. You know, with the live music on. Which is your culture. I, I'm interested. How does your wife feel about all this? Well, when I was fasting, uh, what, we don't have kids. Uh, so we normally eat together, uh, and we're, we're kind of close. We're, you know, if you imagine the couple in Up, the movie, that's what we're going to end up like, right? Um, we're kind of like that, and uh, so we eat together, and we really enjoy. We're each other's best friends. So when I was fasting, she was eating alone, and I do a lot of the cooking, and this is where you get these clashes, right? This is, I'm not eating. My wife's eating, Stephanie, and lots of lovely smells in the kitchen that I can't have. Uh, so sometimes, though, wives, and I, I'm sorry if women don't like this, but <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm an old romantic, I think. But traditionally, if you're very close with your wife, she will kind of mirror you. So um, I, I don't want to get in trouble by saying things like this, but if, if women, my wife seems to look up to me. She seems to sort of, you know, um, I'm her man. So whatever Gary does, I, I, I might just try that as well, right? So uh, what's happened is when I was fasting, she started eating less. And as I learned more, I told her. And then when I went on to carnivore, she watched. And she began to mirror. So over the last uh, four weeks, my wife has been partial carnivore because I do a lot of the cooking. And again, this is where it gets a bit tearful because she's wearing clothes that she was going to throw away. She's lost um, She's lost a stone. Now, for women, this is, this is a bigger thing that can even be vocalised, especially by men. In the privacy, uh, people having their private time in their bedrooms, in front of the mirror, in the bathroom. This is why you should never tell people they're fat, because they've already told it to themselves in the morning. The mirror's already told them. And when women lose weight, it, it, I think it's, it, it's so joyous for them. It's so fulfilling for them that they can slip on that little dress that, they've, that, that they kept five years ago. And, and they put it back on, and, and they come to you. And, and you can just feel... It, 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 the happiness coming from them, that they, you know, and they're like, you know, and, oh, it's adorable. It's absolutely adorable when, when you see the successes. Um, and so now she's kind of three quarters carnival. I'm actually concerned she's lost too much weight. Maybe I just like a nice, you know, a nice particular shape. You know, I'm used to her being the way she was. Um, but I don't want her to lose much more. 
right? So I, <laughs> I'm like, um, I bought her a cake the other day. Right? Not supposed to do that, of course, I know. Uh, but I'm like, have a cake. She only had half the cake, which I was quite impressed with. But uh, and the point is, I don't want I don't want us to get skinny and and start to look emancipated. I don't think that's a good look either. But she's lost a stone. And that's massive. It's massive because it makes her feel more of a woman. Where and and, and, and you know, I'm I'm sure she would explain it in a different way. I I feel so happy for her because she's mirrored me and ended up with success as well. So that, that's um, awesome. That, that's really good. Um so um you've gone from fasting to being on carnivore and you've talked about some of the stuff you eat but how often are you eating yeah i've seen omad um i don't think i can do that um i generally i in the morning i'll have like four eggs normally scrambled uh i'll have probably five or six slices of bacon uh, I normally throw in an avocado if I have one. Um, I do drink coffee. Um, I have tried the bullet coffee, but come on. Who wants butter in their coffee? Christ's sake. Yeah, it's fun. You can do it. You can pull it off, but it's rank, right? So I don't do that. I just use milk in my coffee, thanks. Um, and then, uh, but I will say, that recently, actually, because things do evolve, don't they? Recently, I can get up and I don't need to eat till about 12. And again, this is where I'd like to touch on the addiction of habits. So three meals a day, all the addictions we had from childhood, they're, they're habits. Right? You, you are addicted to your habits, not only the, the, the carbs and sugars. You're addicted to the habits. So I have started not having breakfast so early because I simply don't need it. Uh, so things are evolving in this way. Later in the evening, I normally take three steaks out of the um, freezer. They're defrosting, and we eat them about five or six o'clock, and then we feel fine. We don't need very much. When it comes to snacking, because that's another addictive element, it's the snacking. It's the going to the fridge, you know, going back and forward to the fridge. In England, British people, for example, we're addicted to the kettle, I wouldn't even say tea. I'd say we're addicted to the kettle. More so, the kettle switch. You know, you're having a chat. Someone wanders over, click. You know, there's the kettle switch gone. Did anyone ask for a drink? No. It's it's automatic, right? You, you, you just, there's the, the kettle's on. I oh, will have a cup of tea, right? You could do this 50 times bloody day. You don't want 50 cups of tea. It's an addiction, right? <laughs> so the fridge and the kettle, the problems right um so for snacking i've tried to experiment with cheeses and i would agree with people that cheese can scupper your goals and i go for mozzarella uh, so I, I i snack on mozzarella yeah and uh, some of the beef i've cut into thin slices and i put in a box in the fridge and i'll snack on those cold i haven't got a problem with that um, I, but I, I would say calorie wise, not that I'm counting, but I think I probably only eat about probably I probably only eat about thirteen hundred fifteen hundred calories a day, probably less than that, and I exercise. Uh, and I know the general advice is for a man. I'm six foot, so a man is it's two thousand two and a half thousand. I'd I'd ignore that. I think that's crap. I think it should be 1,500 if you want to stay slim. And for women, it could be 12, 1,300. And if you want your waist measurement to be half of your height, um, you can't eat a lot of food. If you want to sustain that uh, metric, you cannot overeat any food uh, because you'll, you'll just see it increase. And there you go. We also have one fasting day. Uh, we call it Fasting Wednesday, so me and me and Steph will fast on Wednesday, and we find that that just kicks into check any 
maybe too many coffees or, or it, it just keeps a little lid on naughtiness now i would like to be a pure carnivore uh, and i am moving in that direction but um as a normal human being who's had 50 years of gluttonous addiction with sugar and carbs uh, i think it's uh, humanly kind of cute and adorable to allow yourself to cheat uh, but all the while watching the scales and keeping an eye on your waist and obviously doing some kind of keep fit and when when you know, people are walking it's a two-hour walk you need to go for a two-hour walk don't do anything for half hour it's pointless it's a complete waste of time from my marathon running years ago i mean i used to i ran my marathons at 14 stone right the same weight i am now and when i was doing them between 40 and 41 no, 39 and 40 I'm now 55. I was running about a thousand miles a year. So you can work that out however you like. But when you're training for like marathons and you try and do as many as you can, because you're not going to do them for the rest of your life. Well, I'm not. Um, you get one shot at it. And, and once you get fit enough to give it a go, you kind of go for it. And that was my period for that. Um, but I stayed at 14 stone. So I ran a sub four marathon at 14 stone i've run a 132 half marathon and a 44k 10k 44 minute 10k sub 45 at the age of 40 but i was 14 stone so i know my body likes that weight and the annoying thing about it is that the bmi for me is four kilos lighter so i'm not sure if i can trust the bmi uh, metrics anymore and it's, it's very old-fashioned but the measure in the waist half your height is a much better metric than the BMI. Yeah, I, th I think it's very good for people who are way off, right? If you are, mm -hmm. if your height is, you know, six foot and your waist is not three foot, it's four and a half foot, you know, you're in serious trouble. You can follow a BMI all you like. You know, if you're huge uh, and you've got a lot of problems, you're going to get a really lot of brilliant benefits very quickly. But when you get close to your BMI, Things slow down real fast. But yeah, once you start to get down, your uh, the improvements you desire become much smaller. And then it, it, like where I am, it's very small. I don't lose any weight at all. But I know, I know if I go out to a restaurant for a few days, I'm putting on two kilos and an inch. Uh, and that kind of, you know, that, that tells you what the food and the sauces and the creams and the chemicals that they put in in the food uh that's that's the your, your body's going to suck that up and go right well we, we'll hold on to that gary thanks very much for that yeah we'll keep some of that you know you, you can see it on a day-to-day -day basis but the improvements are much smaller when you get close to your normal weight yeah so, <laughs> so um Gary, do you have any social media or any way people can reach out to you? Uh, I don't know. I don't have any channels, no. Gary, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate your time. No, I, I'm so glad to have met you, Dave. I think it's wonderful what you're doing. And, uh, and I, I, I think you underestimate the influence your channel's having.